Hey everybody, welcome or welcome back to the channel. So if you're new to ethical hacking and penetration testing, and you're wondering where to start, then this video is for you. Whether you're transitioning from IT, or you're studying cybersecurity, or just trying to figure out how to break into the field, I wanna walk you through the exact career path I recommend for becoming a professional penetration tester. I've been doing this for over two decades and I've mentored hundreds of people and I keep getting the same question all the time. What should I focus on first if I wanna become a professional penetration tester? And that's actually a really good question because the reality is there's a lot of distractions in this space. There's courses available everywhere, tools everywhere, buzzwords everywhere. But if you actually want to get hired, if you wanna build a real long-term career in this field, you actually need to focus. So let's talk about what actually works based on what companies need and what clients are paying for in order for you to get a job as a professional penetration tester. Before I detail the optimum career path for beginners, I'd like to mention my book that's titled Professional Penetration Testing, which is now in its third edition. That book has been used by students, instructors, and security teams all around the world. And it's designed to walk you through what it really takes to become a professional penetration tester from building your first lab to actually running full client engagements. The cool part about the book is you can use it alongside your lab work or as a companion to your training path. And if you're serious about doing this the right way, it's a solid guide to have on your desk. All right, so now let's talk about career path. If you're just starting out, the very first thing I recommend you focus on is web application pen testing. So this isn't just a nice place to start, it's actually the most useful and relevant skill you can build early in your career. So it doesn't matter if the organization that's hiring you is a startup or a Fortune 100 company, if they have a digital presence, they're gonna have to have something tested. And here's the best part. By learning web application pen testing, it's more approachable than most people think. And what I mean by that is you don't need a full enterprise lab to get started. You can simply spin up something like WebGoat or DVWA right on your laptop. Also, the amount of hacker tools you need to learn is actually substantially fewer when you focus just on web application pen testing. So that means you're gonna be able to start exploring concepts like input validation, authentication flaws, session management and just basic injection attacks and you can do all of that in your own lab safely and legally and here's probably the most critical thing to understand that mastering web application pen testing can open doors all by itself i personally have seen people land jobs full-time roles not internships purely based on their web application testing skills so if you can demonstrate that you know how to identify real world vulnerabilities and more importantly, explain how you found them and then why they matter, you're gonna immediately stand out. So keep in mind that companies care about your ability to identify risks to their assets. And if you can show that you know how to find and explain a vulnerability in let's say a logic flow or an API, then that's real valuable experience. So web application pen testing is where you should actually build your foundation. So it teaches you how to think like an attacker, how to understand app behavior, and then how to use your tools effectively. It's also where you wanna start learning how to document your findings, which are just as important as the actual attack itself. So as I mentioned before, web pen testing is a foundational skill, but once you're confident in your web skills, the next phase is gonna be network penetration testing. So this is where the learning curve actually starts becoming really steep. So network pen testing takes everything you learn in web testing and then pushes it out across the entire environment. So now you're dealing with things like system enumeration, protocol exploitation, networking attacks, and then eventually full network compromise. In the beginning of your career as a network pen tester, you're gonna start running external assessments where you simulate what an attacker might find coming from the internet. So as your skills improve, you're gonna move into internal assessments where you're emulating an attacker who gets access either as a disgruntled employee, through phishing, or by compromising an external system. So in this phase is where you learn how corporate networks actually function. You begin to understand how authentication flows through something like Active Directory. So you'll dig into protocols 
like SMB, Kerberos, LDAP, and you'll start exploring how local privilege escalation works on real servers. And here's kind of the rub. This is where a lot of beginners start getting overwhelmed because it's no longer just about exploiting a flaw. Now it's about chaining things together. It's about moving through a network, identifying trust relationships, escalating privileges, and just staying undetected while you're doing that. When you move into network pen testing, you learn tools like Bloodhound, Mimikatz, Crack Map Exec, and Wireshark. Those start entering into your vocabulary. But the, the thing is, it's not about the tools. It's actually understanding the logic that's behind them. So the question is, why are you using them? What's the problem you're trying to solve? And what's the attacker's goal in this particular scenario? Network pen testing gives you that broader attack mindset. So unlike web application pen testing, it's not just can I break into this thing, but how do I get from a single exploit to total domain compromise? And if you wanna be taken seriously in this field, uh, especially for internal engagements or consulting roles, you're really gonna to need to be able to walk through that process with confidence. Now, a lot of people wanna jump straight into learning red teaming because it sounds exciting. I mean, yeah, it is exciting, but let me be clear. So red teaming is not where you start. It's where you go once you've built serious technical skills and operational discipline. So the reason why is because red teaming is about stealth. It's about simulating advanced adversaries. So threat actors who don't just try to get in, but try to stay in undetected, blend into the environment, and then quietly achieve their goals. In order to be effective as a red team member, you have to know how defenders operate. You have to know what's likely to get caught. So that means you need to know how payloads behave in memory. You need to know how endpoint detection systems respond to specific behaviors. So it's in red teaming where you're gonna start learning about command and control, things like C2 frameworks like Sliver, Mythic, and even custom tools. As a red teamer, you're gonna begin building your own infrastructure. You'll think about callback channels, staging payloads, DNA beacons, custom implants. It's really a deep, end of the swimming pool when it comes to professional penetration testing. So red teaming is where you take everything you've learned from let's say web apps all the way through to network enumeration, even privilege escalation. And then you apply that in a simulated adversary campaign. But none of that is even possible if you haven't put time into the fundamentals. That's why I always recommend mastering web pen testing first, networking second, and only then moving on to red team level training. So if you use this three stage career path, you're gonna learn faster and make fewer mistakes. So when you actually do get into red teaming, you'll actually be able to understand the why behind every step and just not the mechanics. So if you're just starting out and you're really wondering where to begin, here's the truth. You don't need to know everything right now. You don't need a stack of certifications or a degree in cybersecurity to move into this field. What you need is a plan. So that plan should start by building skills in web application pen testing. Build your own web app pen testing lab where you can break things safely, take copious notes, and understand how web apps fail and how they can be exploited. So again, network pen testing is where you practice privilege escalation, enumeration, and lateral movement. You don't necessarily need to know that for web pen testing. A lot of people will tell you you need to learn Active Directory. So you don't really need to know that until you get into the network pen testing, where you simulate internal attacks and get comfortable with full compromise scenarios. So again, first learn web pen testing. Only after you've mastered it, move into network pen testing. And then once you've done that, and only then can you start looking at red teaming. I mean, that's, that's really the exciting stuff, right? You begin to start exploring payload development, your staging infrastructure and doing detection evasion. But you have to build your foundation first. So now, if you want help along with that journey, I built two structured training programs that follow that exact roadmap. So the first one is the Pentest Fundamentals course, and that's designed to take you from an absolute beginner to someone who can comfortably test and explain web app vulnerabilities. And the Pentest Professional course picks up from there. That helps you get the skills necessary to land your first job. Now, it doesn't just teach web application pen testing. It also teaches how to master internal testing, network attacks, and building towards real-world engagement readiness. You'll find both of those courses at Pentest TV, along with some free resources also to get you started. But to sum everything up, 
start learning web pen testing, take your time, build real skills, and then I'll see you in the next video.